Even two years on from their launch, games developed just for PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X and S hardware are still a relative rarity. From Returnal to Ratchet and Clank of Rift Apart, there's still an event to be savoured. All of which makes a Plague Tale Requiem, developed by Asobo Studio, such a unique proposition. In a Plague Tale Requiem, we have a true, focused PS5, Series X and S release. There's no last-gen version, no older PS4 or Xbox One GPUs, CPUs or memory constraints to factor in when building its world. And instead, this new hardware focus gives the team at Asobo the freedom to build richly detailed, larger environments with improved lighting and materials, to push the boundaries of its in-house engine, to deliver a sequel to the original 2019 game A Plague Tale Innocence that actually does feel like a generational leap. No question, A Plague Tale Requiem has gorgeous visuals. Up front, it's worth saying the PC release pushes the envelope more so than console with some neat extras, so we have ray tracing support exclusive to PC, an option that's promised to be added via a patch shortly after release. It wasn't out on PC at the time of editing this review, and <laughs> well, honestly, it might just be my luck that it does just as we publish this, but that's the nature of the beast. We do see Reflex Boost support though, that's in the options now. Also, Requiem is one of the first games to debut Nvidia's new DLSS 3.0 technology, which is a big talking point in itself, perhaps for another day though. But today, today I'm focusing on the console situation. Just how does the game improve its tech over the original, A Plague Tale Innocence? How do PS5, Series X and S all compare visually? And do they each deliver the game at a solid 30fps, or better yet, if we output each console at 120Hz, which enables a 40fps cap instead, are PS5, Series X and S up to the task at a higher 40fps target? Let's find out. A quick summary first of what we've got in Requiem. In just about every way, I've got to say a Playtale Requiem is an improvement over the original. Technically, mechanically, even narratively, it's a serious level up. The mixture of stealth and puzzle solving return, but it's all round more robust, more varied, and the crucial word is expanded, offering you larger environments to carve your own path through than the original. The setup is simple in that we pick up where we left off in Amicia's story six months on. Travelling across a plague-stricken 14th century France with her younger brother Hugo, the search for a cure continues. You sneak around the French Inquisition, merciless, axe-wielding guards who will cleave you down on sight. So there's a real horror aspect to being caught and frankly, engaging in combat, being spotted, is usually tantamount to defeat. So really, don't do it. Requiem is a game of stealth first, of sneaking through large outdoor areas, broader, wider in scope than the first games, making sure to distract with slingshots, rock throwing and smashing pots. It doesn't always go to plan, it does take some patience, some trial and error, but when a plan comes together it's hugely satisfying. Next there's the rats. Much like the original, the technology behind generating a huge swarm of rats is a remarkable feat. In the original game, a Sobo's engine rendered 5,000 rats on screen at once, their detail scaling down the further you go into the distance. But now, in the sequel, it's pushed to a quite excessive 300,000, with the team altering their movement to make it look more like a tidal wave as they burst through the gaps. It's not just a gimmick for show either, rats link directly into gameplay as before, around darkened spaces, across the dimly lit castles, or the fields at night. If you make any contact with the swarm, you again face a very grisly death. Good news then, they're absolutely terrified of light, and so, be it sunshine or torchlight, puzzles often revolve around manipulating light to clear a path ahead. Once you're fully versed in Requiem's rules, its gameplay mechanics, all of this escalates again. You end up with some pretty terrifying scenarios. 
areas where rats and guards come together in one space, forcing you to carefully plan out your use of sound, light and shadow in concert. Seriously, if you've the patience for it, it's brilliant stuff. Now, there has been a debate online about Requiem being just a 30fps game on PS5, Series X and S. So, to be clear, it's capped at 30fps on 60Hz display specifically on console, or 40fps capped if you have a 120Hz display hooked up to any of them. Either way, some people are disappointed it's not running at 60fps by default, and to an extent that's understandable. Bear in mind the original game, A Plague Tale Innocence, ran at 60fps on PS5, Series X and S, and this feels like a step backwards of sorts. And sure, 60fps is missed, I won't argue against that. For a quick example, here's the PC version of Requiem running in full 60fps Splendor on an RTX 4090. It's a taxing game, but through brute force, a premium GPU like our 4090 here is still able to hit 4K, ultra settings, and 60fps all at once. In truth, I'm using the DLSS quality mode in this case, which puts the native res at 1440p, though that's more for the anti-aliasing benefits of DLSS, and to be 100% sure it'll lock to 60fps. Even running at a native 4K though on the 4090 typically gives us headroom to spare for 60fps as well, so there is flexibility. Either way, I think you'll agree, 60fps makes a perceptible difference for any quick camera movement. Right now, there does appear to be a bug though which adds a judder effect to motion at times. Despite every frame uniquely outputting at 60fps here, no drops, the motion itself isn't quite as smooth as you'd expect on certain camera pans. It's an issue we hope gets solved with a patch, though clearly the result is an upgrade over the console's 30fps. Personally, of course, I'd love to see a 60fps mode on console, just as an option maybe in the menus, even if it does run with reduced resolution or settings. The reality right now though is, Requiem's setup on PS5 and Xbox consoles is a visual fidelity over performance approach. Also a challenge is the fact that, at its core, Requiem is simply a more demanding game than the first. It's not a cross-gen title like Innocence, and visually, technically, it's just doing things the first game did not, being built just for newer systems. It has bigger, wider areas to navigate, addressing a key criticism of the original game where level design kind of funneled you through tighter pathways. So for perspective switching to the original game, Innocence, Asobo's efforts in 2019 were far from lacking. This is running on a PS5 where it had some standout moments in art design. Opening with this showcase section in the wild, much of the action pushes you down this route, a kind of tutorial sequence but also a real tech showcase. The foliage, the density of detail, the material quality, it was all there but just smaller in scope and scale. Moving back to Requiem today, it's clear the team makes the most of a jump to new hardware. On PS5 and Series X, Asobo Studio has the horsepower now to open these levels out into huge sprawling areas. You get more agency, but equally the scenery is packed more richly with detail. Looking at Requiem's own opening area, there's more foliage drawn far, far to the distance. You get higher quality material interaction with light, indoors and out. There's more complex geometry and density of objects strewn around the field, plus parallax occlusion mapping. A few other details stand out too, the pin sharp skyboxes overhead being one, being absolutely stunning in this wide shot. And even the early market area is bustling with a huge number of NPCs. The list goes on and on, but I will say something on the character models, which get a huge uplift in quality. In both materials and lighting, our lead character Amicia in close up shows off all these details so well, just in how torchlight reacts with the skin shaders, the hair, the clothes, all combined. Requiem is a real spectacle. Talking on picture quality, there's perhaps less of an upgrade since the last game. 
To be frank, both PS5 and Series X each stay in place at a native 1440p resolution, reconstructing up to 4K using a temporal solution. In other words, there's no change from Innocence before it, which also ran at 1440p with a similar AA technique. And likewise, on Series S, we're again sticking to just 900p as the native figure, which is in line with Innocence. The upshot is nothing is lost or gained in terms of the raw pixel metrics, though clearly the sequel is pushing for higher settings and bigger environments as a way to leverage the system's resources. And so, combined with some of the better motion blur I've seen in recent years, plus a mostly HUD-free interface, in motion, Requiem hardly disappoints on PS5 or Series X. As for Series S, well, comparisons do show some compromise here, clearly. In a three-way split comparison, it's clear Series S lags behind on the image quality front. Running at 900p does sadly inevitably take a toll on the presentation of Requiem's detail at such range, dulling all those fine tree elements. It's not a deal breaker, though it's evidently the number one downside on Series S. As for the other differences, well, PS5 and Series X are expectedly identical to one another, barring a slight difference in shadow position in early capture, but the settings are really the same. If we compare Series S directly to Series X though, there are a few settings dropped for the weaker machine. Ambient occlusion takes a hit, leading to less shaded foliage, while foliage in general appears less dense at range. Otherwise, this is really the same game across all three platforms. One extra thing to note though before we quit the comparisons, PS5 does make excellent use of the DualSense's adaptive triggers. The resistance on the triggers when using the slingshot, for example, is a superbly worked detail and worth a mention if we're comparing all three. Okay, on to performance, and the very blunt summary is that yes, we have a 30 APS cap in place on all three. It's evenly frame paced, and with adaptive screen tearing kicking in on all three, where the engine's really pushed. I'd also stress that, well, let's say 95% of the time, you're getting a smooth 30 APS line here, no issues. Xbox Series X is the best and most consistent performer of the three, and I've rarely seen much more than a single frame drop here and there, even in the most taxing spots. The emergence of rats is a big stress point for the game, typically, and it barely shows a blip on Series X. Likewise, these open areas filled with guards and rats shows no issue, and even the sequence walking through fire, lots of fire, runs just fine, which will have some relevance in a second. Moving on to PS5, here we do see some drops. It's a less stable 30fps release all round, though largely still very solid if we're being fair to it. If we're picking out the worst points for comparison, here's that burst of rats seen again on PS5, now showing a clear drop into the mid-20s where it ran perfectly on Series X. And again, the walk through the fiery fields pushes Sony's machine to the same mid-20s level, complete with full screen tearing. Later sections do have issues too, where the rats and guards combine in these wide areas, and here again we see an abundance of tearing. The summary really is that the majority of play is still 30fps, just expect the drops to be that much more regular on PS5 in its current state, where there isn't as much of a distraction on Series X. On that point, the Series S version falls between the two. I'd say in overall consistency it's closer to Series X, so, in many of the areas where PS5 does drop and does tear, you'll see Series S just flies through at 30, barring select moments with the swarms of rats. So, in terms of performance, the drop to 900p on Series S does have some benefit in the visuals versus frame rate balance. There is a twist to all of this, of course. It's not quite the unlocked 120Hz mode we had in the original, and that is a shame, but by selecting 120Hz output in Requiem, you at least get a capped 40fps. The settings otherwise stay in place, 1440p native resolution on PS5 and Series X, and matching settings. So 10 frames per second more to play with, for free. Now capping to 40 doesn't really give the VRR support on either console much range to work with, 
and really an unlocked reading would have been better. VRR may have some marginal benefits for when it drops under 40fps, but that's really it. Now clearly Series X runs parts of the game just fine at the full 40fps cap, though we also now see why 30fps is the more realistic target on console. In the end, this highlights every instance, every moment, where Series X is just being stressed, and yes, it's all the expected spots. The areas with heavy fire, the stronghold with all the guards and rats in view, the sudden surge of rats, all drop Series X to the 30fps line, or at least it kisses the top of it briefly. This isn't ideal of course, but it highlights realistically how far these consoles are from the 60fps line. PS5, meanwhile, expectedly, is even further off the mark from hitting a stable 40fps. One thing to note is VSync is enabled while running at 40fps, so no screen tearing. It at least helps remove one visual artifact, the tearing, even if all machines do still waver between 30 and 40fps, especially PS5 which is much more prone to drops and dips into the 20s. Honestly, we found there wasn't a huge perceptible advantage in motion while running at 120Hz on PS5, even with VRR to help it along. The Xbox Series machines do feel better, but it's still, again, not quite what we'd expected. Now, the low frame rate compensation feature, LFC, will help with latency when running between 30 and 40 with VRR enabled. And certainly the 120Hz output should also improve latency by some degree. It's just the results in practice and the benefits of 40fps in motion just isn't as immediately obvious as other games with a similar mode like Ratchet and Clank and Rift Apart and especially factoring in the drops under 40fps too. Anyway, last up here is Series S. The same point stands though. Stability at 40fps just isn't a given the fact the option is here is a good move, but perhaps not enough on its own. With tweaks to the native resolution, lowering it from 1440p on the premium consoles, and dropping other settings in shadows, it might be more viable, more of a locked experience. As it stands though, the 120Hz output mode isn't quite where it needs to be. That shouldn't be the final word on a Plague Tale Requiem. The game really is a technical feat, a real standout visually on PS5 and Series X if you're okay with the 30fps cap. Requiem is remarkably tight in its mechanics and commits hard to a great story. A plot tinged with horror elements and a historical backdrop that isn't too typical for games of its type or its budget. As far as the console recommendations go, well, if you've the luxury of choosing, no doubt go with the Series X release for now, purely for being the more stable 30fps release. PS5 runs acceptably overall, just expect moments with obvious drops here and there. I really hope that the PS5 version does get some sort of patch update to optimise this, because usually the divide between the two consoles isn't so apparent in the frame rate stakes in terms of multi-platform releases. And as for Series S, well, again, we have a very well optimized version, excepting the drop to a 900p image. And at least in frame rate terms, it puts in an excellent rendition of one of the year's best games. That about wraps up everything on the console front, I think. A definite recommend, though really, that's all I've got today. If you did enjoy this video, feel free to like or subscribe, and don't forget to hit that bell for instant notifications as any new video lands. To get a high quality version of this video, check out our Patreon at digitalfoundry.net, and to get in touch directly, just use Twitter. But from me for now, thanks for watching.